what is Shodan and why is it so popular? So we get asked this question quite a bit because we have a Shodan within our external scanner, we're pulling that Shodan data. Sometimes it differs from what RoboShadow sees and what's in Shodan, but we pull it into the same port. Um, and that's why we get a lot of questions asked on this subject. So I'm just going to run through what is Shodan and why do you sometimes see some discrepancies from a, a, a RoboShadow perspective. So Shodan is... I call it the hacker search engine, effectively. Um, I don't think it should exist, um, but um, it, it was built with good intentions, as I understand. Uh, you might need to fact check me on this one, um, but uh, I think uh, it come from a, a team out of Harvard in the US, um, where it effectively just runs through all of the external IP address ranges. There are millions of them, but we'll just run through them all sequentially, running... Uh, all of the top port scans, so all the things that could be broadcasting to the world, probing those ports, seeing what's running behind them. There'll be a banner, a header, just how sort of vulnerability scanning tech works. And then it will then run those banners and headers against vulnerability databases. Um, and then it will then work out if you've got a vulnerability or not. Now, this is great. And this is something that is available within the RoboShadow platform as well. Um, the problem is it doesn't take a lot to get access. If you've got a credit card or can get hold of a credit card, you can get access to Shodan and they produce an API. So effectively, um, not only is it used for good for people like us in RoboShadow, I suspect that the whole criminal world have access to Shodan uh, nation states. Now, um, just so that I don't upset anyone at Shodan, we love your products um, and we know what you're trying to do with it. If Shodan didn't exist to show the world the vulnerabilities, then the nefarious teams will just build this tech it themselves. It's just not that hard. It's a not getting into the code. It's a for each loop against millions of IP addresses done en masse um, with a sort of fingerprinting lookup and those databases are free to use as well. So I suppose what Shodan is doing is quite trying to show us what the world can see about them and what's out there in the world. So if you Google what is my IP address, Take your IP address now. Go to Shodan.com, um, I believe it is. Apologies, might have to fact check me on that. Uh, just the Shodan website. Uh, put that IP address in um, to Shodan and um, you'll see whether or not the world knows of your vulnerabilities. It will also bring in some other metadata where you're located and just general other metadata as well. Um, but it's, it, is a, um, it is a way of being able to see what the world knows about your IP addresses. Um, and if you're in there, um, not every IP address is in there and it changes quite a lot. If you're in there, you can bet your bottom dollar that um, nefarious teams will have access to that data as well. Now, um, if you have uh, data in Shodan, or your IP address comes up in Shodan, does this mean that you are going to be hacked? Um, not necessarily, because number one, people have got do run the time to actually hack you effectively, um, which isn't always a, a, a 10 minute job. Um, and also um, the reason there's discrepancies from a RoboShadow perspective, uh, Shodan will snap at certain times. So they'll be scanning regularly depending on what the throughput is. So um, you can have an IP address that you borrowed um, if you have service provider from home or something like that, or you don't have a fixed IP. A lot of office networks won't have a fixed IP as well. Then your IP address can change into an IP address that someone else has had previously. They had lots of vulnerabilities, but you don't. And the world thinks that you've your IP address that you've got now has got those vulnerabilities. And when they try and scan or try and hack you on those, they don't actually exist. So that's why there's sometimes discrepancies. It gets updated fairly regularly, though. Um, the data in Shodan is fairly good, but it is something that we like to show to our users in terms of um, um, what the world will see um, and know of their IP address. So will I get hacked if I'm in Shodan and I've got vulnerabilities? Should I run around uh, with my hair on fire? So... If you, we've done lots of videos on this, but if you have vulnerabilities, um, firstly, you need to work out, does that port need to be showing anything to the world? Quite a lot of time they can be shut down. Um, that's a different conversation. Get in touch um, if you have any questions there. Um, and um, if you've got vulnerabilities um, showing to the world, then nine times out of 10, you just patch and update that software and that vulnerability will go away. It's not the end of the world. If you are showing vulnerabilities to the world um, and that's available on Shodan, I would kind of look to get them sort of patched fairly quick smart. And again, um, it's not the biggest job. There's not usually a lot of cost involved, assuming that the technology behind them isn't out of date legacy and there are actually updates um, available. But the bit that is one of the nuances about Shodan that we kind of, I like to sort of share with the world, um, the nefarious teams will 
hang out on all of the Twitter feeds, all of the feeds that of all the new vulnerabilities that come out. So they will see when they come out from NIST and MITRE and they're logged with the agencies effectively. They will have access to Shodan. And as a new vulnerability comes out, they will effectively just spin up um, a part of the API within Shodan and say, oh, this is a vulnerability. It requires this tech. It's a CPE, not to get into the um, detail. And then they will then run that against Shodan to then work out what machines and what IP addresses have this tech running behind it. And then they will find the exploit and they will just do this on mass. So a lot of nation states or the nation states that are still after sort of getting money out of you for ransomware i won't name names to um upset people um not that i'm too bothered about upsetting nation states um but they will be trying to um, they will be trying to work out a way that they can um hack you and if they find a vulnerability they know that they can exploit then they'll put a team on it they will do a bit of testing by automation and a bit of ai if they feel they can really get into your organization um or your house and they feel there's some benefit for them to do that then that's when they'll put a team on it or at least a human being to try and actually sort of gain that access effectively so it's not the fact that um you're definitely going to get hacked if you've got data within Shodan, but it does mean um, you probably do want to patch that vulnerability or close that port down effectively, um, but they will be hanging out, the nefarious teams will be hanging out what what new vulnerabilities come out effectively, what is um, in Shodan um, and what's being shown to the world. Obviously, um, the vulnerability, if it's only just new out, Shodan probably won't be showing it as a vulnerability. The hackers will just be seeing uh, what software is running from that. There's a banner and header that comes back, which I won't get into the tech. So they don't need to actually be the vulnerability in Shodan um, for them to be something for them to want to probe and hack effectively. So good. I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully that covers the Shodan question.